All right, woodworkers, we're back. And if you're watching this video, you may be new. So welcome to Five O'Clock Woodshop. I'm a hobbyist woodworker that's gotten into fine furniture making. And today I'm gonna recommend to you the 10 tools that I think everybody should own to start woodworking, right? It's gonna ramp up from your absolute basics at number 10 all the way to number one, where you're finally into that, okay, with this setup, I can get into the really high-end fine furniture market, right? At even a hobbyist level. And I'll talk about that when I talk about the different types of tools, right? There are lower end hobbyist level tools, and then there are really high end tools uh, that you can get to improve your woodworking that much more, but they're not what you need to just get started. So at number one, we've got the tape measure, right? Seems kind of funny, and some of these first few are like, duh, everybody should have one of those, but you never know, right? So you really can't do anything without a tape measure, right? A ruler's only gonna be so long, and it's just cumbersome. So a tape measure is my number, uh, did I say number one? I think I meant, well, we'll go with number one. We'll go uh, basic to extreme at number 10. So as you can see, I've got three tape measures here. So yeah, everybody's probably got their dad's old tape measure floating around their shop, but they do different things, right? So this is your pretty standard tape measure. It retracts and you can lock it into place, uh, but it's pretty flimsy and you know it's your basic one and as you can tell it's pretty old i upgraded to this one right here which is pretty nice it's locking and you can retract with uh, any button here and then i've upgraded to the milwaukee also it's an auto lock so these are really nice i like the auto locks because you can just run them out and you're not fidgeting with a button this one's more rigid than my other here and so it was just a nice upgrade the other thing i like about this one and i'll roll this one out so you can hopefully see, and I might have to zoom in extreme here. As you can see, all the notches on the bottom for the 16th, eighth of an inch, quarter inch, even up to half inch are not labeled, right? So this is your standard tape measure. This is what I like to call a cheater tape measure. So if you can see that every notch almost is labeled, right? Whether it's uh, 7 eighths, 7 sixteenths, 1 half, et cetera, they're labeled. And so, yeah, you can probably count it out or just know on the fly, what notch is, but it's really helpful to have those cheaters in there to just make quick work. So get yourself a good tape measure, spend the $20 on one that'll last you for a really long time. Going to number two. Okay, at number two, you've got your DeWalt drill, right? I don't know why I said DeWalt, because any drill will work, right? Ryobi, uh, Makita, DeWalt, Milwaukee, uh, Rigid, you name it, right? Um, you can buy them cordless or corded, it uh, doesn't really matter your preference, your budget, you make that decision. I like my hand tools to be cordless, but I do own some hand tools that are corded and I'll tell you why when I get to them. But this is our number two, it's a drill. It's just super versatile. You can use drill bits, you can use actual driver bits. Um, I mean, yeah, you just can't do much without a drill, right? A screwdriver is only gonna get you so far. So this one's got a bonus to it. A couple of these tools will have a bonus to them. So you've got your regular drill here, and then what I also recommend picking up if you can stretch your budget a little bit is an impact driver. Impact drivers are just super useful. They're really good at driving in uh, screws into tougher, harder woods without stripping the screw as you're doing it, right, which drills have a tendency to do. So for me, I use my drill to drill on my pilot holes with drill bits, and then I use my impact driver with driver bits to get my... Um, hardware actually into the wood, right? Whatever type of screw I'm using. So number two, get yourself a good drill. You can also buy these as combo sets. That's what I meant to mention, uh, which is why I recommend stretching the budget a little bit. You're probably gonna buy one of these in the future anyways. So save yourself the 50 bucks that you do when you can buy them in a combo set. You'll get more batteries and you'll get more tools. Okay, at number three, we have drill and driver bits, right? Uh, more specifically, a bit set, sort of like the skill one that I have here. Now, I've talked about this bit set a lot on my channel. I'm pretty sure the third video it's featuring in, but I'm telling you, I'm crazy about it. I can't remember what it was the last time I priced it out, but it's not more than $50. I think it's a lot cheaper than that, honestly, but it's a 120 beast drill and bit set, uh, and you just... You can't beat it, guys. It gives you all kinds of different bits, uh, different heads on them, right? Your pan handle, your star, your, uh, I don't think pan handles, right? Your pan, your star, your Phillips, your flat. 
Uh, it gives you extended bits, it gives you spade bits, it gives you drill bits, and then it gives you regular bits for your drill, right? And so the reason I went with this set and the reason I always advertise it, because if you took my advice from the last tool, you will buy the dual set impact and drill driver combo. And bits, this is a drill, uh, of course I picked the flat one. This is a bit that's used in a drill, right? It's got a solid shank solid hex shank, you can see that. And so the drill will collapse on it as you spin it, and that's what holds it in place. But an impact driver doesn't work like that. It's got a quick release system. And so to use an impact driver with a bit, the bit has to have a notch on it like that for the teeth of the impact driver to clamp down onto. And so I went ahead and got an impact ready set that gives me both drill and impact driver bits. So I recommend you do the same. Again, can't talk up this drill bit set enough. It's got everything I use. I literally use it constantly during every project. I would recommend that. Now, if you've already got a bit set that you like and it doesn't have any drill bits, another set of bits you can, should consider owning is your standard package or box of drill bits similar to this one here. So I have two. One's newer than the other. Eventually, you're going to break a drill bit or lose one, you know, or they're going to dull out. Who knows? So you might want to have a few of these around. Anyways, uh, this is the one that I use. It's got several bits in here, and they're useful for all kinds of pilot holes, whether you're drilling into a wall to mount hardware, I use them to build my fence, or just doing your standard project. So a nice drill bit set will go in there as well. So this was another combo tool. Number three, a bit set. Okay, tool number four, essential to woodworking, is your circular saw, right? It is so versatile. If you can't afford a table saw, then a circular saw is your next bet bet best bet right so i have a dewalt cordless uh, xr circular saw that i use primarily but again this is one of those instances where i wanted to show you that there are other cheaper options this is probably a circular saw that my dad got from harbor freight and passed on to me for a lot less than a cordless saw might cost you so there are always other options but a circular saw super versatile now another thing i want to talk about another bonus when i'm talking about a circular saw is this craig Crosscut jig. And again, something that kind of constantly appears on my channel for a useful jig that you can buy to amp up your woodworking game. Circular saws are really great for making fast rip cuts, right? But they can be really hard to make accurate cuts because there's nothing holding you square to the piece. Now, this fence here will hold you onto the piece, but not square to it, right? So if you're really good and you're really accurate and you can go all the way across a four foot board, and keep that bad boy on the line, impressive. I can't. So I'll either use a clamping system, I've got an eight foot borer clamp up there, or you can get one of these crosscut jigs. Um, a lot of people make them, I use Craig's, but they're really helpful. Your, your circular saw slides into place here, um, and it's being a pain for me for no reason. Slides into place just like that, attaches to your uh, fence there, and then this gives you cut, a cut width of all the way up to 24, in, 24 inches. You just slide this along to where your line needs to be. It's got a nice marker there. And then you align the side of the crosscut jig, which is right here, to the straight edge, the straight outside edge of your piece. And then you can make your rip cut. So again, just talking this piece up as a bonus with the circular saw. Number four, I believe, circular saw. Do yourself a favor and buy a crosscut jig while you're at it. Okay, at number five, we have a sander, right? So I've got a DeWalt Random Orbit Sander. This was probably one of the first tools that I bought after those basics, like I told you, right? So I consider those first four really the basics. Um, and as, except for the bit set, you can really buy the impact driver, the uh, drill, the circular saw, along with other tools like a reciprocating saw, et cetera, multi-tool in combo kits and that's what i'm going to list below uh, in an affiliate link is a link to a dewalt combo kit i think they save you tons of money and i recommend buying those as your first big woodworking purchase but on to sanders i think it's super important to have a sander because once you finish this product you need the surface especially if you're making cross cuts or rip cuts with your circular saw etc you're going to get jagged edges right rough edges that could be i don't know they're just rough they hurt um, they can stick to things, and so you want to sand them down. So there's all kinds of different ways to do that. I've got a random orbit sander, but you can go as simple as just regular sandpaper like I've got here because you'll use those uh, 
every so often. You've got these sanding blocks. This is a foam sanding brick. It's got one um, grit on it, which is 120. And then you've got these kind of fancy foam bricks that you can adhere um, textured or Velcro sandpaper to at different grits. I use both of those pretty regularly as well. And then to pair with your palm sander, your orbit sander, you've got all kinds of different sanding discs, 80, 60, 120, 220, all the way up. You know what I mean? Um, and if you're going to be sanding a lot, which you should be as a woodworker, just go ahead and stockpile a uh, set of sandpaper, whether it's your discs or your hand sandpaper, any of it, it's, it makes sense to have it. Now, I told you some tools you can buy cordless, but I prefer to buy corded, and this is one of them, right? Um, so sanding takes a long time, and it's an intensive process that takes a lot of power from the tool. So sanding is one of those things that I think it's better to have a corded tool for so that you don't have to run the risk of running down the battery on your tool as you're using it, right? Because you're likely going to be using the same battery pack for your drill, your driver, your circular saw, etc. So if you use up all the juice on your orbit sander, well, it's just going to put you in a bind. So I bought this one corded, and I recommend you do the same. So number five, some type of way to get sanding done. Okay, coming at number six is a router. So I have two routers, and you'll probably end up with two at some point as well. But if you're going to start by only buying one, I recommend you buy the one on the right here. So unfortunately, I don't have the actual router to pull out and show you because the router is sitting in my router table, which is an upgrade for, you know, when you get there, when you need it. I consider routers to be tools that are probably more versatile than your table saw. And your table saw is probably one of the most, if not the most, versatile tools in your wood shop. Routers allow you to do some really crazy things to getting straight edges by using flush bits, flush trim bits, to getting round over edges, to cutting dados, to cutting rabbits. I mean, you name it, a router can probably do it super effective with super clean cuts. So on the left here, I have a trim router. It's smaller, it's got less horsepower, and it's limited to quarter inch bits, right? So bits will typically come in one of two sizes, quarter inch or half inch. Now, something that's taken away more wood, it's more intensive, it's going to use a half inch bit just for safety and because of the amount of torque on that bit. And that's where you get into the right side here with the higher horsepower uh, router. Now, the other reason I like this router is because the combo kit that I bought was a plunge base and a fixed base router. So currently I've got it on its fixed base and a fixed base is much like this trim router here. It, uh, the bit will stick out and you can't move it up or down, right? So if you're gonna, and that works fine for doing any kind of detail work on the outside edge of a piece. But if you wanna start in the middle of a piece and work out or cut into a middle of a piece, uh, like I did for these T-tracks that you can see all along here, right? I had to route out these channels to bury my T-track. A plunge base works really well because you can set the depth and then you can lock it so it's locked here or you can plunge it down, right? So the router starts up here, the bit kind of free floats here, you turn the router on and you plunge it down, lock it in place, and then you're able, you're able to slide it along your workpiece. So the DeWalt combo kit that I bought gives you both a fixed base and a plunge base router. I just can't talk about it enough, it's super effective. Now with your router that you'll buy, you'll probably also want to get a set of bits. Now you can do like I did and just buy uh, the bit you need at the time you need it, but router bits can be pretty expensive, anywhere from $10, 50 to $100 per bit, right? Depending on the type of bit and the quality of bit that you're getting. Or you can buy these combo kits, kind of like the bit driver set uh, for, you know, $50, $60 that give you all kinds of different um, types, right? A roundover, a rabbit, a core box, a dovetail, you name it, this one's got a lot. So uh, that's my pitch, and routers, super helpful, but they're for detail work, and they kind of add flair to your pieces, which is why they're at number, are we on six? Okay, coming in at number seven, and honestly, this one could be lower on the list, as in more of a basic that probably everyone should have some form or type of. Number seven is a combo uh, tool suggestion, right? So I'm adding glue and clamps into this uh, number seven because i don't think you can have one without the other if you're using clamps you're probably using glue clamps can be used to hold things down sure but if you're using clamps to really join your pieces together chances are there's glue in the mix 
So for my glue pitch, right? Most of us are just buying the single use uh, eight fluid ounce bottles of glue that you can buy at your hardware store, Gorilla Glue, Elmer's, you name it, there's a bunch. Um, my reason that you should not, if you're seriously into woodworking and you're gonna be doing a lot of it, you're gonna use a lot of glue. And so that stuff hardens pretty quickly, it goes bad pretty quickly. So my recommendation is to buy a sealable gallon jug of glue, no joke. Uh, this is Type On 2, it's kind of my favorite glue to use. And then get yourself some sort of dispenser like this one that keeps your glue also, you know, uh, it's 16 ounces I think this one is, but you can buy an 8 ounce one similar to your other. And then this allows you to dispense glue evenly, easily, because it's super easy to press. Those were giving me a nightmare. Um, anyways, I'm talking too much about glue. Buy a glue bot, buy a gallon of glue. The next part of this, clamps. Clamps are super important. They can be used for so many things, whether it's holding something down, clamping something together, etc. In fact, I have so many clamps, I forgot about my other clamps. Clamps. They're versatile, right? These are your standard hand pressure clamps. They work by just applying pressure through uh, kind of clamping down on it, right? Kind of like a, a, a trigger-based system, but they're limited to the amount of pressure that they can uh, apply, right? Um, but they're cheap. They're super usable. They're super versatile, I mean by that. Uh, I picked those up probably four years ago at Harbor Freight. I've got a bunch of different lengths, a 12-inch, a 24-inch, or that's an 18-inch, and then all the way up to a 36-inch here. And I've got two of each, uh, and I use them all the time, right? Even in conjunction with this next type of clamp, which I'm going to talk about, these are like the ultimate woodworking clamp, right? But just because they're the ultimate ones doesn't mean they're the ones you need to buy. They're used for specific purposes, and that's really panel glue-ups, right? Because they add a really even amount of pressure and give a very flat surface to sit on, and they can stand on their own. So that's the kind of um, advantage to bar clamps. The bad thing is this one 24-inch clamp was $50, right? So the bigger you get, the more expensive they're going to be. And you're never going to need just one clamp for a glue up. So if you're buying two 24-inch clamps, that's $100 right there. So I've got two different types. I've got four total. I've got a Bessie and I've got a Jorgensen. Honestly, pretty equitable in price and um, capability. This one's got 1,500 pounds of clamping pressure. This one's at 1,700. I bought these off of Amazon. I bought these in store. It's up to you and what's available to you. Uh, but, you know, they're nice, they're effective, um, definitely usable. Our last set of clamps here, corner clamps. So let me see if I can get that undone. All right, corner clamps are really good for building boxes or keeping things square as you're pocket holding them together or gluing them together. So two different type of corner clamp systems here, uh, both of them effective. This one's good for when you're needing to stand it up like this. This one's good for when you're needing to rest it on a flat surface. So clamps are super important. I'll link a lot of these in the description below. Just find what you need and you can always build up. You don't need to buy all the clamps right away. Number seven, clamps and glue. All right, chances are if you've been following along and taking my advice and buying these tools as you go or just as you need them, you have a lot of tools by now, right? Plus all the tool accessories, right? Even more bits, sandpaper, you name it, different blades for your saws, your jigsaws, router bits, everything. You've got a lot of stuff. Where are you gonna put it? So coming in at number eight, right? Not a necessity, but something that's super helpful is just a decent toolbox, right? So uh, you don't need to run out to Home Depot and buy the biggest expensive toolbox you can find because if you're not gonna fill all the space, why have it, right? Start small, right? So I started with two toolboxes that I inherited, just uh, gifts to me at some point or another, this one cobalt here, and then had a smaller Craftsman rolling uh, tool chest kind of like this one. Um, but, you know, you can put them on benches, you can store them on shelves, wherever they need to be. But it's really good storage for all the stuff that you'll need. Um, I, I filled this one up and it's still not full all the way down. But it holds some of my big saws. It's really helpful for things like that. And then this one even gives me power uh, via an outlet that it's attached to in the back. And so it just gives me versatility around the shop. So number eight, a good toolbox. Pro tip, big box stores are always putting these on like significant sales around Black Friday. Uh, Labor Day, Father's Day, you name it. So I'd wait for one of those good sales. Can you get these things like three, four hundred dollars off? Number eight, toolbox. Okay, so number nine on my list. Nine and ten are both really big, expensive tools that will take your wood woodworking to the next level. All right, 
I've been talking about how the table saw is one of the most versatile tools in your shop. So number nine is the table saw, right? There are so many different options out there, affordable options and options that probably exceed the type of work you're needing it for at that time, but something you can grow into. It depends on your budget and your space. So right here is a 10 inch DeWalt job site table saw. There are a lot of things that I liked about this that I won't get into since it's just a recommendation video and not a, this is how this tool works. But uh, you know, just consider if you need it to be portable, this one's portable because I didn't think I'd have it in a fixed place. Plus I move a lot. And so who knows if the next place is gonna have um, room to permanently place a table saw, like a floor standing table saw. But those are options as well, all right? Um, a 10 inch versus an eight and a quarter inch, right? Uh, 10 inch just gives you more versatility and it's got more horsepower through for cutting through hardwoods. And I, I build with a lot of hardwoods, your hard, your walnuts, your white oaks, things like that. Um, not as soft as a maple. And so that's why I went with the 10 inch because it's got more horsepower just innately than an eight and a quarter inch. Um, then you have all these accessories, right? That come with table saws that you can add on as you go. So um, I put this blade out here because they give you a contractor blade to start because it's a job site table saw. But I've gone ahead and spent 60 bucks to upgrade to a fine tooth blade, which gives me nicer cuts and finishes on the wood that I pass through it. And since I'm doing some fine woodworking, that just makes the most sense. Over here, we've got a feather board that you can load into these miter slots to help you stabilize your stock as you're pushing it through because you want to be safe with a table saw, right? As you'll notice, I don't have a guard on it right now. I just have a riving knife, but there's also a guard in here that I can place that'll keep my hand away from the blade. Uh, this is the push block that came with the DeWalt. It's pretty thin, narrow, and flimsy, and I don't like it. <laughs> so I got a uh, Miller's Miles Craft push stick. It gives me a lot of pressure down on the piece of stock as I'm pushing it through. It's thin, and it gives me this little uh, elbow on the back end here to push the stock through safely. And then you've got this one with a rubber grip on the edge. It's got the opportunity to get those elbows dropped just like on the other one, and I usually use this on the outside of the piece. So number nine, a table saw, super versatile. See what you can do um, and see what you can use. The only piece I'll say on the table saw, some table saws, like the DeWalt job site saws especially, say that they can be run off of battery power. I would seriously caution you against that for any sort of big deal woodworking. I just don't think it has enough juice in it to cut through big pieces or especially to cut for long times. So I would always go with a corded table saw. Okay, and finally at number 10, we've got another combo kit, right? Your joiner and your planner. I really don't think you should have one without the other, just my opinion. A joiner gives you a flat surface, a planer gives you consistent thickness ref in reference to that flat surface that you got from a joiner, right? So just using a planer will still leave you with any warps or defects inside of your uh, stock just using a planer won't get you consistent thickness. It'll give you tapered edges and all kinds of other nasty stuff like that. So I think it's a combo kit. Now, when you start talking about joiners or planers, this is where I'm kind of out of the, okay, we're just doing, you know, around the house projects or building shop furniture or outdoor furniture where you can use rough lumber that doesn't always have to join together really nicely. But if you're looking to get into fine furniture making, making cutting boards, anything like that, where you need that uniform thickness, you're gonna be gluing faces together, you need solid glue ups, use a joiner and a planer. Now, the reason it's number 10 is because it's probably my most extreme tool, right? My furthest out of the reach for a beginner woodworker, unless you're starting with a crazy, crazy budget. These can run you as a, you know, as a combo, anywhere from, I don't know, six to $700 to get both on the hobby end spectrum of tools all the way up to $4,000 or more, right? Each one of these things in their full capacity can cost you a couple thousand dollars per. There's all kinds of different considerations to take in when you're looking at what sort of joiner and planer to buy, right? Length, width, freestanding, portable, bench top, whatever, you name it, helical head, spiral cutting head. And I can go in depth on that if you guys really wanna know what the difference between joiners and planers are or what types there are. In fact, I just released a joiner 101 video and if you don't know why you should buy a joiner, check that video out. I'll leave a link in the description or just check my channel and it'll really hopefully convince you why it's so important. So this is the joiner. I've got a hobbyist entry level one. This one cost me about $250, about the cheapest decent joiner you can get. Um, 
And yeah, I, I've used a lot. I've used it a lot. So I think it's well worth it. Okay, and for the other half of number 10 is a planer, right? Planers are just, they're incredible. They really only do one thing, unfortunately. It is not a versatile tool, but it's really good at the one thing it does. And it gets you that consistent thickness in reference to a flat surface through an entire piece, right? And they're real accurate and they can get you a real, um, real, real, I don't know how to say it. Um, this goes all the way down to like a quarter of an inch thickness, right? So um, it's, they're just great and they're, they're safe. And so that's why I like planers. Um, this was probably the tool that I splurged the most on in my shop. My wife bought me the table saw, so I don't really consider that one. That was a birthday gift. This is something that I bought for myself. Um, they've got all kinds of different planers on the market. This is one of the higher, I'd say mid, mid grade ones because you can get some really expensive planers, um, high end to, to mid level. Uh, but there are, are, you know, DeWalt makes a, a cheaper version, um, that's a little bit more limited in its capabilities. But, uh, the reason I bought this one is for the cutter head that's inside of it. And, uh, yeah, planers are super important. Don't want to get sidetracked here. So number 10 joiner and a planer. Okay, guys, hopefully you learned something from this video. Hopefully it gave you a good point to start at. If you're getting into woodworking, it's something you think you'd be interested in, but you just don't know where to start. I mean, I basically took you through all of the big and important and, and heavily utilized tools that are in my wood shop, almost in the succession, in the order that I bought them. Um, and, you know, I'm in the middle of making my first fine woodworking product project, and I've only run into one tool that I didn't have. And that was a biscuit joiner. But even then, you don't need it. I just borrowed it because I could. Um, these are the tools that I recommend. Uh, again, hopefully you learned something. The last thing I want to say about these tools, and I know it can seem daunting, right? I don't want to scare you away from woodworking if you're just looking at getting into it and you're like, well, shoot, I can't afford all of that. So why would I even try? You know, the first thing is you get these things over time as you build up, right? If you're just starting woodworking, you're not going to even need to use a joiner or a planer because, well, you haven't gotten there yet, right? You haven't built those skills up to where you're comfortable. Okay, I know how to use a joiner and a planer. I know what it can do for me. And I'm going to build things in which I need that sort of tool. So start with your basics, those first five items. Get good with those and then ramp yourself up, right? And, you know, you can, my, my last point here is that um, there's always another way to do something, right? You don't need uh, all the fancy tools to do, you know, joining or planing. You can build jigs. You can make a cross cut sled for your, uh, table saw. You can make a joining gig for your jig for your table saw. There's so many options. Um, and okay, this is really the final point, but this is also an important one. Uh, you don't have to buy every tool brand new guys. I didn't, I haven't, I bought a lot of my tools secondhand right off of Facebook marketplace, um, Craigslist, estate sales, you name it. Sometimes you just come across a really good deal. That planer I splurged on, that's like third-hand use, man. I bought it from somebody that I bought it from somebody else. Uh, but, you know, you just get good deals on them. And sometimes that's what your budget allows for. So just be cautious when you're doing that. Give it a good test at the uh, place that you're buying it from before you buy it to make sure that it's in good working order. And be prepared to have to put a little bit of money into uh, repairing it or tuning it up, whatever. So that's been the first 10 tools that I recommend for every woodwalker, woodwalker, this is a woodworker. This has been five o'clock wood shop. Thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate all the support that you've given to the channel over the last two months. It means a lot to me and I'm excited to see what we do next.